Hey guys, James again with TFB TV. Have you ever had to do that thing with your dog where you have to force it to take a pill? It's awful, isn't it? The dog doesn't want to take a pill. Humans don't like taking pills. Dogs don't like taking pills. But unlike humans, you can't really reason with a dog and say, hey buddy, you've got tons of parasites living inside of you. So you got to kind of take this pill so we can get them out. You can't really reason with your dog. So what do you have to do? You have to trick your dog. And that usually involves wrapping a treat around the pill, taking the pill, like stuffing it into a pill pocket or a treat or like a piece of steak. And then you, you trick your dog, right, into taking the pill. Now I hate old guns. And give me a second, I'm gonna draw the connection there. I hate old guns and the guys at Inland Manufacturing, they're known for making, they're famous for making the M1 carbine, which is an old gun. It's been around since the 30s. It served in World War II all the way through Vietnam. So it may not look like it, but this is an old gun. Guys, this is an M1 carbine. It's just wrapped in new gun treats. You have the Sage EBR chassis. Sage, of course, more commonly known for their chassis for the M14 and the Remington 870. This is a solid, free-floating chassis frame that's made out of a block of milled aluminum. So it's monolithic, it's as tough as it gets, and these in and of themselves, they cost 400 bucks if you buy just the chassis. And towards the rear, you have a Gearhead Works tail hook brace. And you need the brace on here because you're looking at a 12-inch barrel on what I'm going to call the tactical M1 carbine. And yes, it's position adjustable. You've got an ergo grip, and you even have little pop-up iron sights. So basically what we have here is Inland doing what they do best, the M1 carbine, but placing it into a newer, more modern chassis that brings it more into the 21st century. This, of course, like most M1 carbines, is a 30 caliber. It shoots 30 cal carbine, and that basically means you're shooting a really, really fast 9 millimeter. You're looking at 110 grains at somewhere between 1,700 and 2,000 feet per second. Well, that's good news because we also have a half by 28 threaded barrel on this M1 carbine. Again, pretty cool, huh? So what I like about that is we can put a Bowers Verse 9S suppressor on this guy. So the guys at Bowers and Silent shop were cool enough to send me this verse 9s now normally this is a nine millimeter submachine gun suppressor but depending on the baffle stack that you have in it you can use this on anything up to 300 blackout this one fortunately has the blackout stack in it so I can use 30 cal through the suppressor no problem and I can't wait to do it and guys that looks pretty freaking sick doesn't it So I never thought that I would like an M1 carbine, but this looks good to me. I know there are a lot of you out there freaking out right now. You're freaking out because your M1 carbine, it should look like a Red Ryder BB gun, right? You want it to have walnut or oak or mahogany or whatever the hell the stocks were made out of back then. That's what you want it to look like, and that's fine. I get it. But for me, guns are tools. I want mine to have all the modern conveniences. I want to have a sight rail. I want to be able to mount accessories. I want a free floating rail. I want a threaded barrel. And you get that with the new M1, what I'm calling the tactical M1 carbine from Inland. And guys, come on, this looks pretty cool, doesn't it? With the silencer on there and everything. It's a pretty neat looking package. So, you know what? Let's go over the history and the specs. And then I'll take you out in the range with this and let's see how it does. So what is the M1 carbine and where did it come from? Well, the best place to start that discussion is to talk about the M1 Garand. The Garand was the rifle issued to most U.S. military infantry in more or less half of the 20th century. And while the M1 Garand is one of the most historically popular and successful service rifles, it weighed 9.5 to 12 pounds. It isn't as if that was so far out of line with rifles that were being issued back in the day. And while it worked great for infantry in the front line, it was a little much for support personnel. They didn't need a 10 pound, four foot long rifle. So in 1938, the chief of infantry demanded that the ordnance department look into building a light rifle 
or a carbine for use by support personnel. Essentially something that was much lighter and handier than the M1 Garand, but was still going to be effective out to 300 yards. They found their answer in a man named David Marshall Williams. After Williams killed the sheriff that raided his illegal distillery, he was sentenced to 30 years in prison, but it was commuted because of Williams' work in the penitentiary repairing firearms. After Williams was released from prison, he continued to work on firearms and actually patented did quite a few concepts, including the floating chamber device, which is what is used in the M1 carbine. Williams was later hired by Winchester, and it was at that time that the military approached Winchester to develop this new lightweight carbine that they needed. Williams developed the M1 carbine in conjunction with Winchester, and it was accepted by the military in October 1941, and it went into service in 1942 in the European front of World War II. Over 6 million copies of the M1 carbine were produced, and it entered the history books. The M1 carbine saw U.S. military service until roughly Vietnam when it was replaced by the M16 because of lackluster performance of the typically 110 grain 30 caliber round in the jungles of Vietnam. And while Williams designed the M1 along with Winchester, the military needed somebody who could generate serious numbers in terms of manufacturing. And that's when Inland Manufacturing sprung off from General Motors. Inland manufactured nearly 3 million firearms in less than five years in support of the war effort, including the 30 caliber M1 carbine. They also manufactured the M1A1 paratrooper model with a folding wire stock. Inland Manufacturing is still in business and is still in Dayton, Ohio, only two miles away from the original facility and they're still producing M1 carbines. Today we're looking at the Inland M30P, what I've been calling the tactical M1 carbine. It's a collaboration between Inland and Sage International, and as stated, it has a 12 inch barrel with half by 28 inch muzzle threads. It has an M1 style adjustable rear pop-up sight with a ghost ring aperture, a push button cross bolt safety, the Sage EBR chassis system, and it comes with either a 10 or a 30 round magazine. Remember, this is technically a pistol, and it's fitted with a Gearhead Works Mod 2 pistol brace and an Ergo Sure Grip. It features an overall length of 26 and 3 quarters inches. Inland has the weight listed as 5 pounds, and the MSRP is a steep 1729. Guys, I cannot lie to you, old gun or not, I've been having a lot of fun shooting this M1 carbine today. So when I got this gun, it was completely dry. And I actually had a few jams the first time I was shooting it, but once I actually took it apart and cleaned it and lubed it, really like you're supposed to do whenever you get a brand new gun, it's been running 100% ever since, and I haven't had a problem. This gun's incredibly mild shooting. It's almost like shooting like a nine millimeter AR-15. Perhaps not that easy, but darn close. And there's probably a good reason for that, and that is that the 30 cal is an intermediate power round. Again, it's like shooting a nine millimeter round just at 2,000 feet per second, like almost twice the speed of a normal nine millimeter round. So it's something in between nine millimeter and say like 223, 5.56 or 762, 39. So it's incredibly easy to shoot. And that's made for a really fun day at the range with this M1 Tactical. Magazine release is really easy. You've got a little button right here in front of the safety. It's got a standard cross bolt safety. You can see the mag catch on the other side, just as simple as the mag release. All you have is this little metal tab right here, and then it connects, the little tab connects on these little divots on these ledges on the back of the magazine. The flip up sights are removable, but the ones that are on here are pretty nice and pretty well constructed. You just pop a button and then they hop right up and they work very well. All in all, it's been great shooting this little gun today, especially with the Bowers Verse 9S, which has been very quiet and added to the fun factor. So to wrap up this review of the M30P, if you're gonna get me excited about an old gun like an M1 carbine, 
This is one way to do it. I know many of you out there are going to find the concept absolutely revolting. In fact, I think I'm probably in the minority when I think that this is not a bad looking gun. And while I had some reliability issues with the gun right out of the box, that was only because it was bone dry and unlubricated and I never had an issue with the rifle after I lubricated it and put it back into use. It's a very light recoiling gun that's fun to shoot. It would probably be a pretty good option for home defense because you're looking at something more powerful than a pistol caliber, but less powerful than say 5.56-223 or 7.62-39. The 12-inch barrel certainly helps in close quarters as well. Moreover, the addition of the Sage EBR chassis allows you to mount lights, optics, whatever you might need, and the pop-up sights on this gun are pretty good right out of the box. I love the guys at Inland, but to be perfectly honest, I think at $1,729 for the MSRP, they are going to see at best limited interest in this gun. However, you have to remember that Inland manufactures lots and lots of M1 carbines, and for them, this is just a simple stock swap. So it isn't as if they're going to be hurting to sell these things. But that said, I could certainly see the interest. You have guys out there who like the M1 carbine and who want to have essentially an SBR M1 carbine that gives them some options in terms of modularity. For what might be a small set of people, this is what you're looking for. So while I wouldn't call the M30P a game changer because again, you're looking at a design that's roughly 90 years old being put into a modern chassis and being sold at a pretty steep price. It ran well when it got some lube. I had a good time with it, and I think there are gonna be people out there who are interested in the M30P. In any event, I wanna say thanks to Inland for sending this to me. Thanks as usual to Blue Alpha Gear. They make the best tactical belts on the market. Thank you to Ventura Munitions for sending the ammo that I used in this test. And most of all, thank you to you guys for watching, and I will see you next week.